In this video, we're going to talk about spot rates, figure out what they are, and see how they can be used to help calculate the price of a bond, and even just discount cash flows in general. So we have a three-year, $1,000 par value bond that pays 9% annual coupon, so we know it's a coupon paying bond. Uh, the spot rate of year one is 6%, the two-year spot rate is 12%, and the three-year is 13%. I'm going to place that in a table really quickly. And I'm going to call the spot rates S sub T, but you can use whatever notation you like. Um, so we've got three spot rates, yeah, one year, two year, and three year. And they are 6%, 12%, and 13%. Often spot rates will be uh, noted in a table like this, just so it's easier to see how each cash flow will be discounted. And that's exactly what a spot rate stands for. It says some spot out in time from today say time t, any cash flow that happens at that time will be discounted back to today or time zero using that rate. So you can see in our table here, any cash flow happening two years from today should be discounted at a rate of 12% per year. Any cash flow happening three years from today will be discounted at 13% per year. And the spot rates usually increase as, a, as time increases because you can think of it uh, as if you're moving forward through time, you're locking in uh, your money for a longer period of time, so you should get rewarded that with, with a higher rate. Um, so the first question we have to is answer is determine the price of the bond. So let's, like all bond questions, I would recommend drawing a timeline for our cash flows. It's a three-year bond. So today's time zero, time one, time two, time three. Uh, we're getting annual coupons of 9%, and 9% of 1,000, which is the face value, is a cash flow of $90 every year. So we're going to get 90 at time one, 90 at time two, and then the 90, the final coupon at time three, plus the 1,000 back at time three. So that's actually going to be a payment of 1,090 at time three. Now to determine the price of a bond, if we think about what a price of a bond is, it's just the present value of the future cash flows of the bond. So I want my price today, so I'm going to use my spot rates. I need to discount this first $90 cash flow, this one here. Um, price, again, present value of all the future cash flows. So that first 90 happens at time one. That's one year out in the future, so I'm going to discount at the one year spot rate. So I'm going to discount 1 plus the 6%, so 1.06, and that's just coming back one year. Next, I have to discount the next cash flow, which is the second 90. But that happens two years out from today. So I'm going to discount that at the two year spot rate. So 1 plus the 12%, and that's got to come back for two years. So 12% over two years. Finally, the last cash flow is 1,090, which I'm getting at time three. And any my spot rate table says any cash flow happening three years from today should get discounted at 13% for three years. And this is really all we need to calculate the price of the bond. Punch all of that into your calculator, and you should get 912.08. So spot rates, again, are used to determine how a cash flow happening at a certain point in time in the future should be discounted back to today. And that's really all it is. So you'll notice that we're using three different rates here because the three cash flows happen at three different times. Let's move on to, to part B, and this will show a very good tie-in to how spot rates relate to yield to maturity. So it says determine the yield to maturity of the bond. And normally we see bonds listed with a yield to maturity, um, coupon bonds and zero coupon bonds, because if you're the investor in the bond, you want to know sort of your overall yield or your return by investing in that bond. The problem is the yield to maturity is one rate assigned to, assigned to the bond, and we've just seen that we've used three different spot rates to calculate the price. So what we need to do is use that price now as our present value. So the present value is, I'm going to write it as negative 912.08 because we'll actually need a calculator or Excel to use this. I'm going to set that as my present value. My future value is a payment of 1000 because that's the face value of the bond. My payment is going to be 90 and there's going to be three years. 
And then I'm just going to solve or compute on a calculator i over y, which will be my embedded interest rate with these cash flows, or what we like to call the yield to maturity. So if you punch all those things in, you should get a yield to maturity of 12.705%. I'm rounding um, to three decimals. So what does that mean? That means that the way I think of yield to maturity is sort of a, it's kind of like a weighted average of the discount rates of all of the cash flows. So if we look back at our timeline here, we're using a 6% discount rate at one point, a 12% discount rate at another point, and a 13% discount rate at another point. The thing is, by far the largest cash flow is this 1090, right? It, it's a thousand bigger than the other uh, than the other two cash flows. So that 13% that's associated with that high um, cash flow amount, that's going to have the largest weight when we calculate this weighted average yield to maturity. And so the fact that the answer came out as 12.7%, fairly close to 13%, is no surprise to me, as I would have expected it to be a little bit less than 13%, but definitely closest to that. So hopefully that paints a good picture of what yield to maturity is, um, as opposed to spot rates, where spot rates are only good for cash flows that happen at that particular time. Uh, and then once you move to a new time, you discount at the new spot rate versus yield to maturity is kind of like a weighted average that is applied to every cash flow in the bond.